Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The root of war is not land or people abusing power or bad leaders or anything on earth. The cause of every fight, every battle, every offense against God is the dragon, the deceiving serpent who fell from heaven after an attempted coup against God. So the first war happened in heaven before anything happened on earth. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for him for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. To stop sin fully, to rid the earth of war, means to overcome Satan, the original cause of sin in the one who is still active in this world doing evil. But we can't defeat Satan on our own. It's not possible. He is more powerful than any mere mortal. Satan was defeated in heaven and cast down, and so victory must come from above, from heaven. Don't think that you can deal with sin or hatred by yourself. Just try to get rid of it. You can't. We can only say that someone else has a bigger problem than us. We can only be prideful. We can call bullying or fighting or guns or certain leaders the problem, but aren't the fighting words within us? Don't every one of us have an arrogant spirit that always wants to be right? We can't even stop these inside of us, let alone someone else. And so what have we earned? We have earned death. Because we have thrown ourselves into sin and participated in it. We have not fought against it with all our might. All mankind was infected when the serpent first deceived Eve and Adam fell. And that includes you. The dragon has power over all those people who Christ does not own. And according to our sinful nature, the old Adam. So don't think you're up to the challenge. You can't will yourself to good. You can't perform righteousness by your own efforts. And so there is no victory, there is no winning inside of you. In fact, your flesh must obey the devil, the deceiver. For we are born into disobedience, unable to keep the divine law under the full wrath of God. So our love, our peace, is shown to be a sham. We are haters of God, incapable of doing anything to please Him according to what we're born with. So the only solution comes from heaven above, Jesus the Christ. It is His death for mankind that puts aside your guilt. He did it by dying to your transgressions. He stood under the law which condemns us releasing us from the penalty of death. And that is the only way Satan cannot win and have control over people right now. Because there is no stain of sin on Jesus. He obeyed the Father. He drank every last ounce of wrath as a dutiful son. In fact, as your servant. Christ's obedience and righteousness was Satan's undoing. Only in the Lord's weakness and suffering do we find the powerful dragon trampled and defeated. God kept His promise. 
The woman's offspring bruised the serpent's head to throw him down to hell. But you might be thinking to yourself, I don't feel very victorious. I don't feel at peace. It looks like Satan is still very much in control. But the victory is real in Christ, yet you are not fully in Christ due to your old Adam. Your flesh cannot be. So how do we get this victory? How do we live in it? We partake of Christ's strength and life through baptism, through the Word of God, in order to live to God. Romans 6 tells us, For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like His. We know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. And so you were baptized to die, to die to your old nature and all sin. And so the victory is yours in Christ. Christ baptized you into victory. Christ, as your substitute, earned it fair and square. He died your death, and He rose for your forgiveness to give you life in the Spirit. Now that we have died with Christ, we believe we will also live with Him. So earthly peace without God is simply slavery to the sin, to the flesh, and to the devil. But baptism is our share in victory in Christ Himself. And we live by this victory by trusting that God is truthful, that the promise in Christ saves us. And so the water that baptism marks, the Word of God is a lifelong promise that Satan is not our master, that sin is is not to be obeyed anymore because Christ lives. It does not have control over us. And so we are not to live as if we are defeated and have lost, like sin will win the day, letting despair and doubt reign over our minds and hearts. To do that is to live as if baptism is a lie and God was untruthful to you. And so we can't live as if baptism has no effect for today, that would be to deny what Christ has done and what He has said to you. But many people live this way as if sin wins and cannot be resisted, and the devil must get what he wants. But those who live that way get exactly that. To embrace sin, to live entirely for the flesh, is death to the Spirit of Christ. And so sin must not be tolerated. It must not be excused no matter how small it is. For we deal with sin in church not just to make people feel bad, but to bring out guilt in order to forgive it. In order to pronounce it dead in Christ. So that Satan has no power over you and his power is through guilt. He's the accuser. And so we die daily to sin in order to live to Christ in righteousness. You also have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. You serve in the Father's freedom, not under the curse of the law, not under slavery to Satan, and so no accusation reaches you in Christ. None of your past deeds trump you being God's child. But this world is the devil's playground, as is your flesh. And your flesh is always tempting you, along with Satan and his minions, to deny the gospel, to let sin rule in your members, to not care about the Word of God, but we are freed in our minds by the Word of Christ 
but yet we have to live here in this world in our bodies. And how does this saying go? Idle hands are the devil's workshop. And that's why the Lord wants us busy and active in good works. So we walk by the Spirit. So we must fight. We must continue to die to the sin within us, but we are not alone. We have the angels, the good angels, protecting and ministering to us as God's servants. And so we cannot live as if Satan is the most powerful thing in this world or if sin has the final say. No, the deceiver's time is short. God says clearly, you are called to turn away from sin, to be dead to it, and live in hope. And the gospel of Christ not only tells of victory, it truly gives it renewing your hope confirming Christ's victory for you, giving you a new mind and a new heart in the Holy Spirit. So guilt is not to be wallowed in. It is not to have power over you. You have not lost in Christ. The battle is not over. You live to God according to the baptismal promise because it's based on God's death and resurrection. And so you live despite sin, despite disobedience, despite physical death. These things did not stop Jesus, and they will not stop you. And so regret is not to rule your conscience. Christ forgives you. And we have power even over Satan and his demons in the name of Christ, because Christ is so much greater and has already defeated him. The victory has been won. It's for you. Believe this and you have it. That is why our text quotes God saying, now the salvation and power has come to you. So you cannot be defeated in Christ. Satan is vanquished. The law is powerless to accuse you according to your new nature as you live to God, dead to all guilt and fear. You are not to be burdened by sin or lust. You are to die to the sin within you and live a new life of righteousness. And this is what you are born into by water and the Word. And so we fight. As long as we have the flesh with us, we are at war. But not against other people, not against the government. We see Satan's last dying efforts to tempt us, to destroy the church, to cause division among Christians. But onward, Christian soldiers, as the hymn goes, following Christ into battle. We are not at rest yet. What's interesting is that many liberal churches in America, even many so-called Lutheran ones, have removed onward Christian soldiers from their hymnals. Why is that? It's militaristic. It does not promote world peace and getting along. It's offensive that we should have to fight. But if there's nothing to fight for, then Satan and the world have won. Peace with the flesh is not the gospel. No, we must fight against Satan in unbelief and sin. That's what Christ's Word does. We cannot have Christ's victory and be at peace with Satan and think sin is okay. No, the deceiver is not to rule your hearts and minds, to have earthly pleasure and decadence, is peace with Satan and sure death and hell. But peace with God in Christ means a battle. It means to be at war with the accuser and to say that he does not have final say over sin. Christ does who forgives you. So don't roll over. Don't give up. Don't check out. Don't be weak in heart. Don't wallow in guilt. You are a soldier of Christ. So fight against sin in yourself with Christ's word 
and know the angels of God are with you. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. But we believe no matter how dark the battle looks, the war has been won. The outcome in Christ is sure. Satan will be thrown down into the pit at the end. That we are victorious. The message of victory goes out, overcoming all doubt, stronger than all sin. And so the fiery breath of Satan cannot hurt you. So live out your baptism victory through Christ our Lord. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And the victory that has overcome the world is our faith. This means some fighting for a time, a struggle against our flesh, not giving in to the desires of the flesh. But many do not want to struggle. They do not want to fight for the doctrine of Scripture. They do not want to live a Christian life. They want the easy path. They want peace with all things now and to get along with everyone, including Satan. But we must fight against Satan and not accept sin. For you are not baptized to lose or to follow Satan or to give in to your flesh. You were baptized to win eternal life and to be with your Lord forever. Jesus died and rose, securing the kingdom for us. We have Christ's promise, and that cannot fail. So onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.